Welcome to Travel Bubble and to Glastonbury 2022. My name is Adam and in this video we're going to be exploring the farm and seeing what we get up to. So why don't you join us for a massive Glastonbury adventure? It's been three years since there was last the Glastonbury Festival here at Worthy Farm. So why don't we check out what they've been up to in those three years. Hey, welcome to Travel Bubble and to Glastonbury 2019. We're here at Worthy Farm. The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades. Right now, we would be rushed off our feet. People would be on their way now. It's just the year that couldn't happen. The Glastonbury Festival has been cancelled for the second year in a row. The organisers said, in spite of our efforts to move heaven and earth, it has become clear that we simply will not be able to make the festival happen this year. There has still been some activity on the site this year. Yeah, they have opened Worthy Farm to campers who have stayed at some of the iconic areas right around the farm. Welcome to Worthy Farm. In fact, Worthy Pastures. So the warm feeling of this land, and it's got history, and it's got so much beauty attached to it. We have just woken up on the Wednesday morning. The festival is now open. And as we can see up on the hill, there is a long queue of people waiting to get in. Some of them were queuing from last night, so they've been there for some time, but they're going to get in today and join us for the first day of Glastonbury Festival. We were on site ahead of the general public, as this year we're volunteering for our tickets. Behind us is the pyramid stage, which is where the headline acts, amongst other things, are. So well, let's go and see what it's like when there is actually music on. The pyramid stage is home to the headline acts. This year it was Billie Eilish, Sir Paul McCartney and Kendrick Lamar. And there was also a few surprise guests. San Remo is a new venue to the right of the pyramid stage, replacing the Beat Hotel. If you are looking towards the pyramid stage, you will head right and up to the jump hill stage. This is where a lot of the new emerging music takes place, and there are also some fairly large secret sets. You can get very busy in this area. The jump hill stage behind us, and then to my right is the Toll Hollow Bar, and we're going to head a little further back into the woods. One of our new discoveries from 2019, the woods offers a calm step back from the main festival site. Walking the platform, it's crazy knowing that the other side of the trees is a 200,000 plus person festival. We are currently in the Silver Haze area, which is also known as the Dance Village. It's looking a little bit different this year. This is where we would have usually worked at the Sonic stage for the Simon Disco. Unfortunately, that is not happening this year. You can see the Sonic stage looks a little bit different, and there are some new venues as well, such as the Lonely Parts Club, which is behind us and there's also a venue called Firmly Rooted and the BT introducing stage for the new music that has moved out to its own separate venue. So let's go and find that now.
towards the other stage, which is the second stage here at the Glastonbury Festival. This is Arcadia, the giant spider behind us. It doesn't really come alive until the night time, but it is back for 2022. In 2019, it was Arcadia's Pangea, which was the wave. But very glad that this is back here. It is an amazing experience. And let's check it out when it's alive in the beginning. We saw a secret set from Lil Kana here one night. It was very packed. Somewhere in the rabbit hole is an area called the Buckingham Palace. So we'll try and find that, but it may not be possible because there is so much going on, it is going to be impossible to cover everything. Um, so from here, you can head up the hill to the famous Glastonbury sign, which is going to be what we're getting to next. This year, the Burning Lotus was created, a 40-foot high structure from salvaged wood. People were encouraged to write memories or things to let go of and place them inside. On the last day, it was set alight as a moment to let go and gain closure. To the east of the park is Glastonbury-on-Sea, an ode to traditional seaside Britain. On the pier, you can stroll along and sample some rock, look into the crazy mirrors, go on the dodgems, eat pink candy floss, get your fortune read, watch a Punch and Judy, go on the Penny Arcade machines and way more. It's a whole day out in itself. We've made it all the way up to Strummerville. Never actually come up here before, mainly because it is quite far to get to, but we are trying to see as much as possible on this site exploration. Uh, it's really chilled out. We managed to rest our legs for a little bit and grab some food. And it also offers another spectacular view of the festival site. We made it across to the sacred stone circle site, which is just behind me. Really great to hang out in the day and also at the night time as well, where there'll be fires. It's quite close to the southeast corner. There's also rumours that this is where the underground piano bar is, somewhere perhaps behind me there. Whether we'll find it, who knows? I uh, haven't been lucky as yet in the Glastonbury's that I've been here. There is also the dragon. You can go the whole time at Glastonbury without seeing any music. You can learn crafts in the greenfields with various workshops on offer, some for a small fee and some even for free. <laughs> Thank you. 
There are areas to learn about healing practices, do yoga, get a massage, see the future is now thanks to science and so much more. This inner section could be its whole own festival. Off the rail track is the permaculture area, one of our favourites to visit on the site. Relax in the trees and learn about eco-living and eat some healthy food. As long as you find the old rail track, it's fairly easy to get back to see your favourite stages and artists. Sometimes this does mean a lot of walking back and forth between stages. Greenpeace has its own area at the site with a stage, DJ booth in the tree and also a skate ramp, a climbing wall, a giant slide and more. This is also one of the few areas with hot shower access for general ticket goers too. is best known as the nighttime area of the site, although you can visit in the daytime as well. It's great to see the contrast here. Looking at the weird and wonderful, the political, the alternate, sub-genres, artsy party spirit that keeps you going until the sunrise. You don't typically see this area on the BBC Glastonbury coverage. The bug is a party on wheels. It usually hangs around the park in Arcadia area, but it can move about. And 
we also just did a little bit of a dance class at the Glasgow Latino, which is now located here. West Hold stage is behind me here, so hopefully we'll be able to see that once the music is started. There is just so much going on here. If all that wasn't enough, there is the glade area, hidden amongst the trees, a lively gem. Heading east from the bandstand, you will find yourself in the top section of the theatre and circus fields. There's everything from big top shows to trapeze artists. In the circus field is the Glastonbury Free Press. This on-site newspaper is a great souvenir from the festival, but be quick as there is a limited supply. On the east of the site is the Glebland area. You can see lots of unique things here. Head to the Pilton Palace to watch a movie, visit the theatre or see some alternative entertainment. Glastonbury is for all people of all ages and we saw lots of families enjoying their time here. Some volunteers for Oxfam had alternate shifts for kid care, together time and solo party time. If only I could get a ride in one of those trolleys after all that walking. Williams Green is a fairly central part of the site. It was closest to our Oxfam camping. This area gets packed on a Thursday for live music. There was a secret set from Bastille. This year we have been volunteering for our tickets at Glastonbury Festival with Oxfam. What that involves is stewarding, so predominantly manning the gates, checking people in and out of the festival. And um, we've had to do three shifts here, one morning, one afternoon, and one night shift spread across. So we've had plenty of time to be able to enjoy ourselves as well. We have our own campsite, which has been great. And there's a catering here as well, which has been really lovely, as well as showers and some nicer toilets. Volunteering is a great way to be at Glastonbury Festival Festival Before to work your ticket. Um, you can also work with various other organisations such as WaterAid, um, Shelter and Greenpeace as well for example. So just give it a Google if you want to be able to be here and work your ticket, I would highly recommend it. Another perk of volunteering was arriving a day or so before the site opens to the general ticket holders and getting to see the final pieces come together, as well as having access to some of the crew bars. We walked up Muddy Lane on the early Monday morning, looking back at the festival site and another amazing Glastonbury festival. We are just packing up our things here after an amazing time at Glastonbury festival, feeling a little bit worse for wear after lots of walking around, lots of exploring new and amazing different things that we haven't seen before. I hope you enjoyed this site exploration. We didn't get to see everything. I think that's a little bit impossible, um, but maybe next time we'll be able to fill in those gaps and hopefully it's inspired you to either volunteer for one of the charities here or to try and get a ticket yourself. We hope you liked this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and we'll see you again for another adventure real soon.